There we go. Alright, so I didn't actually anticipate to be able to record, but I think if I keep it down, it should be fine. It's like no screaming, pretty much. I haven't actually really listened to like the audio of my videos. I really just make sure that it's the appropriate length so that things just don't get cut off. So like, yeah, this is my volume. Couldn't really hear it, but yeah. So as long as I keep it down, and I have a relative idea of how much it was picking up. Because before I even record, it shows like a tester, and it can... I just give like a little test test like right before just to see how much it like picks up the audio and it's usually like fairly well so I think if I talk like this it should be fine. I mean like th the game isn't really that loud. In fact it's mainly like the title theme or the menu theme that's the loudest aspect of it I guess. But it's originally going to not record but forgot how much like not just this mod but how much like I like to play DDLC mods in general I don't know what it is it's just some it's just really enjoyable I guess still kind of sucks that I know the ending of this one though because I mean like it, it, it would definitely would have gotten me if I had not known it it's not something you can easily predict so but it makes sense in its own way, so. Anyway, we're gonna load back here. So, where were we? Oh, yeah, we just. We got out of the literature club because Monica was going insane. We took Natsuki to the mall, bought her stuff, clothes, dinner, and now we're back at our place. Things aren't really going well. I mean, even though now they are. Things are going well better with Natsuki, but Sayori thinks us and Natsuki are a thing. Yuri. Obviously now, which is, it's been weird because the MC hasn't brought that up since, but we now know of Yuri's uh, cutting addiction, and obviously Monica at this point has her own issues, so just, yeah. What I might do is I might record a shorter video, like 30 to 45 minutes, rather than like an hour and an hour and 15. I guess it depends. Mm. Also... Before I actually start, in regards to Civ 6, I will not be able to record that. So I tried to get running on my laptop and it the lag was even worse. I thought it would be better honestly, but it just wasn't. It's just not something that's going to be able to happen, which kind of sucks. Because I already don't really have a lot of hours in Civ 6. Like I have around 1200 in Civ 5, but like 160 in Civ 6. So like I'm not the best at it. Like I beat Immortal before, but I'm not sure like... I could beat Deity or even play to the point where I feel like I'm playing my best every game. Like, I feel like I could get more efficient. As to Civ 5, it's mainly about whether I'm having a good or bad game at this point. But, yeah, I will still try and probably play it on my own. So, like, I just have an idea, but I won't be able to record any footage. So that means I'll probably start one more series of Civ 5 at some point. But I think that's going to be just a standard Deity series. I might pick a really good sieve, or no, what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll definitely do what I said before, restart until I get a good start, but anyway, yeah, that's kind of irrelevant to this video, so I'm going to just keep going, I guess, through the mod. Hmm. Alright, let's go. Natsuki grabs the sleeves of my jacket. I pull her in close and embrace the moment for as long as possible. Just gotta do that. Her grip loosens a little. Sorry. You shouldn't be. For what? Why is she looking at us and not him? Okay, I just couldn't stop myself. It's fine, Natsuki. In fact, this is great. Don't don't be weird about it. Alright, it's good. <laughs> Thanks, Raven. For everything you've done for me. I never want this to end. Nor do I. It has to come in, and I guarantee you the rest of the mod is downhill after this point. We remain together for a little more. Eventually our responsibilities get the better of us and we separate. Couldn't take this inside. I take Natsuki by the hand and we walk to the grocery store. Where were we doing this? I thought we were home. Grab all the ingredients we'll need for tonight and head on our way. Damn, we're hugging, but starving at the same time. We are back here. Hey, Raven. I can carry some of those for you. Don't sweat it. 
No need. It's my turn to do some heavy lifting. The pain in my shoulder slowly returns, leaving an aching. Alright. Just give some to her. Don't try and tough it out and, like, fuck your shoulder up even more. It's literally the worst thing you could do. Also, no, I never noticed where her jacket matches her hair. Or at least, they're both pink. I just, I didn't notice that before. I just do my best to ignore it. As we approach my house, I take a peek over to Sayori's window. Is that actually it? Damn, one of the... This mod, the mod's visuals are outstanding. What mod had really good visuals? I remember the mod with really great audio was New Eyes and Behind Closed Doors. There was a mod with really great visuals. Was it, was it Brain Clouds? Because, I mean, New Eyes was basically the same. Was it? I don't even know. I remember one of them had great visuals, but I can't remember. But, like, stuff like this is really good. Her bedroom lies on. I think back to the hospital. I told her I'd be there for her no matter what. Did I break that promise by letting Natsuki stay with me? No, because here's the thing. You broke this promise by letting her think you're with Natsuki. I, I pressed this a lot last time. But there is no reason for him not to reveal, or at least allow Natsuki and Sayori to reveal their problems to each other. Because they're in a very similar situation, and no harm can come from them learning about each other's situation and vice versa. Because if that were the case, then Sayori wouldn't just assume Natsuki's with us because we're in some sort of relationship. She'd know about our situation and wouldn't be not only, like, salty towards us, but also, like... Be condescending towards herself because I mean this could jeopardize what we've done for her and like no no when I explain the situation with Nazi we don't know how much time you have left though I mean I swear to god if she commits suicide in this mod I'm gonna be so mad so you won't understand I know her you're right back in my house you thought you knew her I set the bags onto the ground to unlock the door you can't assume you can't assume you know her because you didn't just because you think she said something to you or like let something slip you think you understand her completely no that's Natsuki wanders towards the gate that's like arrogance I don't want to go inside not just yet it sounds childish but I want to enjoy the snow only for a little longer well what wait well wait there and I'll be right back oh we're actually going oh no I thought we were going to her house so we can open the door to the house and make a beeline for the refrigerator I hurriedly throw everything inside, not even bothering to take food out of their bags. I return outside. Natsuki's nowhere to be seen. Bruh, she got swiped by her father? <sighs> I don't know what I expected. I honestly expect- I was honestly thinking she got swiped by her father, and I'm like, no way. No way, but it's just some dumb shit. From what seemed to be thin air, however, a snowball hits me square in the face. I recoil, stunned. Hey, heh heh, say if she wants a snowball fight, I'll give her a snowball fight. This is going to end badly. Just reading a line like this, or no, it's gonna end poorly. I duck for cover behind a bush as she dies packing another. I begin to collect my own. I hear her footsteps crunch in the snow as she creeps towards me. As I poke my head, I run. I'm clipped by Natsuki's next snowball. Nice try. Ah, I return fire on her. I hear her in the back as she retreats towards the gate. What the fuck? Why'd the music change? Natsuki lets out a yup and falls towards the ground. Natsuki, now on her hands and knees, holds her back in pain. Oh god, are you okay? Did you pack a rock into that or something? What did you do? Rush it over, over to her side, taking it to make sure she's not injured. I swear to god, if she's faking this, she's faking this. She better be faking this. Natsuki, I'm so sorry. Natsuki stoops a mound of snow up and throws it at my face. I had a feeling she was faking it. I'm like, what the fuck was that? She hops back on her feet and runs inside, giggling. Stunned and covered in snow, I sit and process what just happened for a moment. Push myself off and head back inside. Natsuki's washing her hands in the kitchen. You win this time. Don't think I'll fall for that again. Forgot she's wearing our clothes. Oh yeah? She uses the water running for me as I proceed to wash my hands as well. Splash some room temperature water on my face. Ah, it's nice. Oh come on, I could have done so much worse. I dry my hands and face using a flannel. Open up the fridge and start unloading the bags of ingredients onto the counter. What do you think you're doing, Raven? Sit your ass down, I'm cooking tonight. Try not fuck it up. You don't want my help at all? Nope. Can handle it. This is a good time for us to go to Sayori's. I mean, you need to part by carrying everything for me. And it's the least I can do since you're letting me stay here. I shrug. Not about saying no to a meal cooked for me by Natsuki of all people. 
Actually, yeah, going to Sayori's now would definitely be the move, especially if it's something to take a while. Just looking at this practically. Because here's the thing. She would be wondering why. Well, first off, we'd be able to hand our... Because from what the MCU is saying, he's going to come clean to her. And by going to Sayori's, we could ensure that that happens as quickly as possible. Coming back here, Natsuki would obviously be like, why the fuck were you at Sayori's? So, we can come clean to Natsuki saying, you know, Sayori's not in that good of a state right now. She tried to kill herself, and I need to make sure that, basically, at this point, there's no re real reason to say that you exposed Natsuki to her. But as long as both Sayori and Natsuki are aware of each other's situation, then there's no need for this random relationship drama and you can focus on bigger things. Keep forgetting I can just, for whatever reason, I don't click the arrow button, I just use the mouse and click. If you insist, take a seat at the table. I'm right here in case you need a hand, okay? You're just going to watch me cook. It's a bad thing? Well, not really. You might want to pay attention to what I'm doing though. Considering you almost set your house on fire making those pancakes. I feel the blood rush to my face. It's done worse. You're never going to let me live that down, are you? I could say something, but I'm not going to. Nope. Eh. <laughs> Natsuki moves fluidly around my kitchen. You really need to learn to manage your time in the kitchen. Cooking and baking should be fun, not a pain in the ass. It is. It's about time management. Efficiency. Why is she moving like that? If it's stressing you out, then you're probably doing it wrong. It's very poetic of you, Natsuki. <laughs> I might have heard it on a cooking show. You watch cooking shows? You even have a TV? Natsuki resumes her work as I watch from the table. Okay, now I just need to let this simmer for a few minutes and we'll be set. Really? That quickly? What do you expect? I'm a pro. I can do it in no time. How come the one person who doesn't eat can cook better than everyone else? Natsuki begins to set the table. Wait, let me sort this out. I've done practically nothing anyway. Position the placemats on silver on both sides of the table. Natsuki defies the food onto our plates. The scent of chicken and sautéed vegetables fills the kitchen. Damn, we're eating good tonight. It's only a stir-fry, Raymond. It's not that special. You say that, but... She must have seen the look on my face. You sure? It smells great. She talks about it like it's nothing, but I can tell she's reveling in the compliment. We sit at the table and eat our dinner. After we're both finished, oh, I thought it was going to be something more like we enjoy the food versus just, alright, we're done eating. I take our dishes and place them in the dishwasher. Fill the sink full of hot soapy wine let the pan soak for a few moments. You just let it soak forever until you feel like dealing with it next. Natsuki's already made her way to the couch and started looking for something to watch. She shouts out to me from the next room over. Raven, anything you want to watch? Unless you have something in mind. Not really. Scrub the pan hastily. Toss it in the, with the rest of the load. Oh damn, we actually did that. Damn, this is in our new room. Because the other one was in the previous part. But this one's also new. I are in my living room, the fine Nazi staring out the window. Aw, oh, it stopped snowing. It'll probably be gone by tomorrow. Hey, at least we gotta have our phone with it, right? Natsuki nods in agreement. Natsuki flips through channels. Soap, drama, comedy, comedy, soap, documentary, soap, game show, etc, etc. Ah, uh, there's never anything good on. I know. You wanna look for a movie instead? Oh, I thought that's what you were doing. Sure. I open the streaming app I like, and Natsuki begins to browse the selection. Not even like hard copy movies. She picks a cutesy love story. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure why we would be surprised, but didn't even get a chance to read it before she hits the play button. I love this movie so much. Why are we watching it if you already watched it? I used to watch it all the time because, because. All right, this is gonna get awkward. I'll take a quick drink. She might need to as well. Kind of thirsty. Raven, I forgot. Natsuki pauses the movie and turns to me. About everything. My father. I can see a tears forming in her eyes. What do you mean? You just remember now? Raven. He has a problem. He's been like this ever since my mom left us. Oh, I thought it was because she died, but... I guess mods say different stories. Oh, I guess she's talking to us now because, like... I guess because she feels comfortable enough. Now, this, there's no reason... There's no reason for us to tell Sayori about this. All we need to tell her is that Natsuki's father beats her. That's basically all we need to tell her, and that's the reason why she is the way she is. But there's no reason to get into all the nitty gritty of it. I think I was five. Looking back, I can see why she stopped talking to him. He was a terrible person before, but why me? 
What did I ever do? I think my dad blames me for her leaving. I think that's the reason he drinks so much. He always tells me I remind him of her. I mean, you share 50% of DNA. And that he hates it. Oh, she's starting to talk like Yuri now. I, Natsuki can't even speak. The Sabi is drowning her voice. Natsuki, just try and breathe, okay? Take your time. You don't have to talk about this right now. You can save this for another day if no, Raven. I need you to know. Raven, since I was 14, he's resorted to to borderline torturing me for existing. He only brings home food once a week. It's usually just leftovers from a restaurant. And when he drinks, he sees me as my mother. The day you saw me in the hospital, that wasn't even the worst. Believe me. I tried to run away from him before. It's prevented you from succeeding. I mean, if you've gotten this far now and he hasn't apparently done anything about it, but <coughs> what I don't get is how her bruises and her nose healed that quickly. I guess that's just game because you can't animate, or I guess you don't want to make like a shit ton of character models like each in various stages of healing, but a couple years ago I found my mom's address. Damn. She actually moved like within like relative distance. It's been something like 11 years since I'd seen her. Took the train to her saying when I knocked on her door, she she slammed the door in my face. Ooh, she sounds like a bitch too. I mean, why wouldn't you take... I'm surprised she didn't try to take Natsuki to begin with. I guess they each have their problems. It's a dysfunctional family. You can't try and force a relationship. That's the problem. It won't work out, especially if there's a child involved. Tell me that she left for a reason, that she didn't want me. So I came back home because I had nowhere else to go. He found out I went to see my mother. That's when he really started to take his anger out on me. He beat me to the point I had to cover up with makeup just to be able to go to school. Or you go there without it and arrest his ass. Of course no one noticed. I secretly hoped that somebody would think something was up. No one did. Then I'd have to explain myself. But they never did. I mean, I was trying to cover up so I can't really blame them. She takes a moment, wiping her eyes with her sleeve. I mean... Just because we, we saw her. There had, to, there had to have been someone else who saw her with like bruises like that. If it's frequent. The R night. You know, the drinks. That was the only escape I could think of. I'd gone back to the doctors a few hours after you saw me. He gave me painkillers for my ribs. Trying OD. So I stole a bottle of wine from my dad's rack in the basement. Tried everything to get away from him. But every time. Every goddamn time. I'd always fail. I have to go back. Raven. I wanted to die. I really wanted to. All to get away from him the pills would have been enough. I guess the few that I had left when I was ready to go to go weren't. But I'm glad. Because you came to check on me. You were worried. You cared about me. I never thought I'd have this, Raven. I never thought I'd feel this way. This this is the first time I can remember where I felt truly happy. All those years, all the pain. Nothing can change the past. But grab Natsuki by shorts and hold her tight. That's the thing. That's I, I was going somewhere with this, but I immediately forgot what I was about to say. Natsuki buries her face in my chest. She's sobbing uncontrollably. I won't let anything else happen to you, Natsuki. I promise. You're here now. I'm always here for you, no matter what. Do you understand? She nods her head, keeping it embedded in my chest. I sit here with her for a while. I don't know what else to do other than let her cry. She's held all this in for so long. She needs to let it all out. After a long time, she sits back upright, wiping the tears from her face. While she's drying her eyes, I glance at the clock. It's getting really late. If we plan on attending class tomorrow, we should go to bed. You've already missed a whole week. Well, one more day. Although there isn't really much point in going. You've already missed a good part of the week anyways. Thank you, Raven. For being with me at this club. For helping me bake for the festival. For saving my life. For everything, really. I... It's no problem, Natsuki. I'll do it again for you. You're so sweet. I... Natsuki, from the yard day I'd lay, I lay my eyes on you. Dude, shut the fuck up. We know what she's trying to say. I thought you were perfect. So I tried to impress you with my trash poems. That's why I spent so much time with you. Really wanted to get to know you. Everything about you is just wonderful. But there's one thing that I can't stand. You hid this pain from me. It's because now he can relate Natsuki to like Sayori's situation in a way. I mean, he's been best friends with Sayori, but he only figured out now she's been dealing with clinical depression and attempted suicide. And I remember what I was going to say from earlier. It's like about Natsuki being happy. It's like she and Sayori I made the comparison before, but this mod really drives home that point. Basically, this mod's putting Natsuki in Sayori's position. 
but obviously it's after the week and it's a different like time but still this can this mod really drives home that comparison I understand that you had your reasons for not telling me but Natsuki I really don't know what else to say are than I love you she was trying to fucking say that Shivlar everything about me you makes me feel a way I've never truly felt before Natsuki doesn't know what to do she sits there for a moment I I love you too Raiden she's weeping again this time she is a joy it seems she wraps her arm around me again significantly tired than before can't help but think back to the hospital. And so you already told me that she loved me. Is this part of the reason I couldn't say it back? Yes. Oh, he actually, he actually, uh, what was it? He accepted it. He, like, accepted the fact. He actually came to terms with, like, what? No, there's a better phrasing for that. But he's actually, like, I don't even know. But, yeah, because, I mean, if we did go Natsuki's route and we are going through this, yes. We are this this is more than just a route. This is a relationship with her. Like, at this point, there is no other route we can go because we are with Natsuki. And with Sayori, it makes sense that we would reject her in this situation. You still want to watch the movie, Raven? Of course. Resume the movie from the beginning. Now. Here's the thing. The survival of each characters and of each of the characters and their well-being is more important than our relationship. If we have to give up time with Natsuki in order to make sure Sayori is okay, that is what we need to do, even if it jeopardizes our relationship. Because we're looking at the bare minimum here. The bare minimum being simply living, not just living, but like living their life, being happy, stuff like that. It's more important than furthering our relationship with Natsuki. Just felt like, oh, I should have clicked that while I ran it or whatever. Don't know when it's going to do that, though. So move credits roll. I realize it's now early morning. It's dusk out. I nod to Natsuki's stand as she follows her dawn. I head to the kitchen for a drink and Natsuki lingers behind me. Raven, can we, uh, sleep together again? Nope. Get your ass in the guest bedroom. I really, really liked it, okay? I sure. Come on, then. Natsuki and I head upstairs to her bedroom. I let her in to change first. She closes the door on me and I wait patiently outside. Change into what? She has no clothes. Just because I say I love you, that doesn't give you the right to peep. How would we peep? I know, I know. I'll stay out, I promise. Of course I won't invade her privacy. Now without our consent, anyway. We don't want to go in and see her malnourished body. Okay, I'm ready. Come in. I inch the door open. Natsuki's already in bed. I grab my... What the fuck is that spelling? Pajamas from my drawer and take off my top as eh? Dude, what the fuck are you doing? What's this man? She's wearing literally the same clothes. Did you really just in front of me? What's the problem? Asuki seems tense, as if she wants to say something, but is withholding it. Dummy. Oh, right. I was about to get undressed in front of her. Do I ever stop and think about anything? No, we already know the answer to that. I'm moving out in the hall for a moment. I get changed into my pajamas with a Y. I come back in. Climb on the bed after turning on the light. <coughs> Fuck, off the light. Then why can we still see her? Natsuki immediately roll, rolls over and holds me tight. She did the night before. Night, Raven. That was quick. No big-ass sequence. Friday. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Quit it with the alarm. I'm not even going to move forward. I remember what I was going to say earlier, and it's that Natsuki, she has to get this moment out now. Say that she's happy with us, because I still think her father's going to get her back somehow. Like, this is going too quickly, and the mods going by is progressing too fast. Like, there has to be some sort of conflict. Like, obviously, and I guess the real question at this point is, are we going back to the literature club? I, I speak, like, sort of, first I speak as if what I would do, and then versus what I think will happen. But I, th I think we should. I mean, there's no reason not to. It w in fact, it would probably be better. For us, if Natsuki and Sayori didn't go to the literature club. Because if they did, then that would just complicate things and just trigger Monica as she already has been. In fact, Sayori and Natsuki staying home, that would allow us, and even if Yuri, like if Yuri somehow stayed out, I mean, that would, I guess, she's sort of being like blackmailed by Monica at this point to just like stick with the club. But if we went, like, I'd. The question is whether Monica, because 
I still think it's weird that Monica has taken this course of action because basically it would imply that she was banking on, I, I've said this like a thousand times before, but she was banking on either Natsuki or Sayori dying and neither of them did, so now she's just like, fuck it all. I've lost. Can't be with the MC. But you would think that she would still, even though she would act like a bitch to the Argo, she would still treat us with like some bit of respect, which she did it. But I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see. But I do think we should go. But I mean, the MC might not do that. We don't know. Beep. It's an alarm clock. We can just skip that. I jerk awake. Waking Natsuki as well. Ah, oh, sorry. I forgot to turn my phone off. Natsuki lays back down and closes his eyes. I forgot we weren't going to school. It's fine, Raven. Check my phone to see who tried to call me. Say you were his mother. Don't. I. You. You better not fucking dare. Don't. We better see what this is. That can't be good. That's why I'm like. We might have fucked up. Hey, I said we should have gone to Sayori's last night. If something happens, don't blame me. Please, climb out of my bed and move into the hall. I call her back and ask if everything is alright. I don't even give a fuck about Natsuki at this point. What's up with Sayori? No, everything is not alright. She explains to me that Sayori had a meltdown last night. She was hysterical, screaming that she wanted to die, that life is nothing but pain. Nothing but seamlessly endless suffering. She tells me that Sayori's been admitted to the hospital. Apparently, two of them will be back in a few days. She also instructs me to check my mail. Apparently, Sayori came by last night to see us when he got back. Instead of knocking, she dropped a letter off. See? Here's the thing. <coughs> this this goes all back to when I said we should have brought Sayori in for, what was it? Well, it was breakfast, I think? Yeah, it was breakfast. And we should have had Sayori and Natsuki explain their situation to each other. Because this wouldn't have happened. This is happening because she sees our relationship. And she loves us, obviously. And that's pain. That's pain for her. Even on top of all the clinical depression and mental illness she already has. She, she just sees, she sees basically Natsuki stealing us. To where, you know, her, not only her best friend and childhood friend, but possibly her only friend, she can't basically interact with anymore because we are with Natsuki. Or say we're in her well and head downstairs. I love how we just don't give a fuck about her anymore. Like, I love we're just like, I wish her well. Like, t does he not recognize this is a problem? I wonder if it's a suicide note. I can't believe this happened again. Why can't you believe it? This was, I swear to God, the MC is just like, his stupidity. He started out smart. He managed to figure out Natsuki's situation just based on a comment which I'm not even sure I would have been able to do. But he's gotten exponentially dumber. Now he's like, I don't know why this has happened, while basically spending 24-7 with Natsuki. The foot of the door, there's an envelope with my name on it. No, it wouldn't make sense for it to be a suicide note, actually. It should be more like just a message to us, because she obviously feels like she can't interact with us because we're with Natsuki all the time. Turn it open, I begin to read. Oh, hold on. I'm actually going to want to read this. Hold on. Life. Oh, fuck. Sayori. Life isn't work. It's nothing but suffering. Day by day, my mind is fluttering. Thoughts of death, depression is rising. If I end up dead, it won't be surprising. I stare at a wall and think about this. I've been feeling this way since I was a kid. I stare at my knife. Not that. Too messy. I think of some pills. Swallowed in vain. I think of my gun of a gun, and my head out in. I would sleep sound, not have to take, the pain and the suffering I live through each day. I'm mentally exhausted, trying to keep up, but all I want to do is sleep, and never wake up. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is suicide note, I guess, so, fuck. I just, I can't believe what I'm reading. I swear to God, he pisses me off. MC pisses me off with each line he says. Like, how could this have happened? He was, you were on top of things. We, we were this close. We were so close to actually, you know, solving all this drama. You know, being there for Sayori, being there for Natsuki, being in, what's it called, like working in Tanger, like, I don't even know, like coalition, we could have fixed both their problems. But because we got, we got arrogant, or like, yeah, I'd call that arrogance in that, oh, Sayori understands everything that 
is happening right now. So I'm just going to basically have a relationship with Natsuki. Even though probably Natsuki isn't ready for this either. I mean, I wouldn't say she's, she's ready for something like this. Sayori definitely isn't, but not again. I'm glad her mom took her to the hospital. I would, I would, I'm surprised he doesn't feel more guilt. I know it's a note written on the back. Ooh, let's read it. I wish I was her. It's Natsuki, obviously. And then he's like, he's probably like, how selfish of her. You, I feel sick. Good, you should. Can't believe this. Why do you keep saying that? You should. Natsuki walks up behind me. What's the matter? I wordlessly hand her the poem. Oh, God. Natsuki's about to hand it back to me before she notices the scribble on the back. Great. Look, look at, look at now. Now, Natsuki feels guilty. All of this happened because you couldn't explain their situations to each other. Uh, would have fixed this whole problem, this whole ordeal. Takes her a second to process what it meant. I would have been fucking dumbfounded if the MC couldn't figure it out. But I wouldn't be surprised at this point. She loses her grip on the paper, letting it fall out of her hands. Oh. How does she even... No clue. Shut the fuck up. She's seen you guys. She... Even if... Like, even if they had an actual relationship, they could talk to Sayori and be like, listen, the reason Natsuki's here is because her father beats her and she can't stay at her own home. Even if you were in a relationship, she would be understanding of this rather than just viewing it as like, oh, she's taking him off for herself. We both stay in the doorway for a moment. Eventually, we both take a seat on the couch together. You should call. Maybe ask her mom if she wants you to visit. Finally, she's actually starting to make some sense. And it has to come from another character who just got out of a fucking tough situation in order to knock some sense into the MC. That's a good idea. I ring Sayori's mother and she answers right away. Ask if Sayori would like me to visit. According to her, she'd love it. That sounds like bullshit. I guarantee it. That's just her mother saying it. I'll let her know I'll be there as soon as I can. Looks like I'm going right now. You coming with? Ah, yeah, that's... That's... Uh... I'm not sure that's the move, bringing Natsuki with you. That's, I su Is, is everyone gonna, like, fucking... Is everyone gonna, like, be punished because of the MC stupidity in this mod? Is this one of those mods? Because I thought the MC was smart. Like, the first part, I'm like, yeah, he actually seems to be doing shit. And then the second part is like, eh. And now he's just, like, basically doing the worst things possible. <clears throat> so you'll be okay here by yourself for a few hours. Yeah, I'll just watch TV or something. I swear to God, if her father nabs her during this period of time, I'm going to be so mad. You better not. I think I'll get my clothes washed. I've been wearing your stuff for two days now. All right, sure. Take my phone and keys off the table. I nip her on the cheek as I pass by her seat again. Why would you do that? Because now she's going to even feel even more guilty about the letter. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. I lock the door behind me, hang to the bus stop. I barely make it to my stop in time. Finally, we get more time with Sayori. I've already said this before. The order of my favorite Doki's damn. We're all in there. Monica. Sounds like a heartbeat. Is that actually? No, it's not. All right. Monica, Sayori, Yuri, Natsuki. Doesn't mean I hate Natsuki. This mod's starting to like... Mod's like this and behind closed doors are starting to like lighten me up to her. But like just Sayori's really underappreciated. I enter through the emergency doors. Moving as quickly as is allowed. I find the reception desk and explain that I am here to visit Sayori. They give me Sayori's room number. No no more identification required. Move quickly to the mental health wing. I find her number out of the room. I guarantee you her mother just said that and she's actually secretly pissed. Sayori. Raven. Sayori's mother leaves the room to give us privacy. I found your poem. Obviously, that's the dumbest way he could have broken the ice because... She left it for us. It's not like we found it. I figured. Sir, what's the matter? God. I'm gonna have to fucking stop. Like, what are these lines? Are we destined to fail? Because just this is literally like plot right here. Like, plot armor. Plot armor in that everyone has to suffer. And like, the harder it is to get everyone to suffer, the dumber the MC is. And that's how it works. I told you, I'm always here for... Shut the f... Oh my god. I hate this so much. I'm like cringing as I read these lines. I'm just like dying inside. Not outside like these people, but speak to me. That was the most 
retarded thing I've ever heard. Well, last night I wanted to. Eh, I think you get the point. But all I could hear through the door was you. Oh, from when we walked in on her. <coughs> you and her are laughing. Oh, yeah. It was like the two of you were laughing at me. Sarah, you don't understand. I would finally, I swear to fucking God, he better spill the beans right now. If he doesn't, I'm gonna like go ape shit. No, I get it, it makes perfect sense. Sayori, I, do you know how much it hurts to see you so happy? To know that I'll never be needed. Feels like a knife being plunged into my chest right now, over and over and over again. Nah, that's Yuri. I can't stand it anymore. Sayori, not ski stand with me because, Raven, you don't need to rub it in. Just get it out. Say, all you need to say is three words. Her father beats her. Wait, that's four. You're happy with her. You don't need me anymore. There's no point hiding it. Just go. Sayori, please, just fucking say it. Say it. Don't even say, Sayori, I, allow me to express the reason for her saying it with me. Just fucking say the words her father beats her. Raven, go away, please. Say it. Oh my god. I'm... I'm... I'm just done. Having heard the pagoda motion, the nurse peeks her head through the door. See us if there's a problem. Please just get him out of here. You fucking idiot. <sighs> Sayori, wait, please. Complying with the nurse's request to leave, I'm forced to make my own way out of the ring. Fucking text her if you need to. Just make it so she understands why. Because, I mean, that's what's dragging her down. If you break that, then, I mean, obviously... Now you've got even more problems, because even if you do confess, she's going to feel guilty for seeming like an ass. I scored back to the reception area, where I'm instructed to leave. You fucking idiot. I hate this mod so much. This, as I'm walking down the street, say always words ring in my mind. I caused this. Yes, you did. We could have solved, we could have nipped this in the bud last part. You, I, I even said it. I'm going to still, I'm going to still bring that back. You had the opportunity. Bring her in for breakfast. Explain, have them explain their situations to each other so that there's no confusion. But instead, just I'd throw it under the rug. Look where it's got you now. This is my fault. Can't believe this is happening again. Turn the corner to my stop as I watch the as the bus speeds off. You deserve that. God damn it. You get my walk back to my house. I hope you break your leg and die. I'm saying this as if it's a, like, sentient person. It took me a lot longer to get back home than I thought. I hope... Oh, fuck. Now Nazi's going to be bad. See, look at... This is what happens when you don't deal with your problems when they arise. They just compile. Natsuki, you there? No answer. No fucking way. No way. She just left. I swear. Natsuki, I head upstairs and hear a rustling coming from the guest room. I gently open the door. You know... You know what? This mod has no right to have us... To force us through Sayori shit. And now to have a fucking scene like this. This is fucking on it. I'm fucking done. I have... Alright. I'm not done yet. It's only 40 minutes. I have 20 more minutes to go. <coughs> no right. Absolutely zero right. To fucking have Sayori... I, this... Clearly the mod creator is a fucking Natsuki fan. I'm, I don't know why I'm not surprised. The mod has no right to have us suffer through all this. All of this. All this dialogue right here. All of this dialogue. And then a fucking scene like this. I Natsuki punches me in the stomach. Almost dropping her towel in the process. Surprised it didn't happen. Obviously the now the mod's PG-13 though. Can't have any nip slips here. Raven, do you ever knock? Sorry. Get out, pervert. Is there a towel holding up? Sorry. It's not even folded in. I managed to get that out before Natsuki slams the door in my face. Keeling onto my knees. Winded. I gasp for air. Dumbass. Takes me a moment to collect myself, but I get back onto my feet. From the hallway, I repeatedly apologize through the door. Alright, situ- What do you should do? Text- Text the mother. That's literally the only option at this point. Because even if we text say we're- I don't even fucking care about Natsuki anymore. I'm focused- Because focus has shifted from relationship to Natsuki with ensuring Sayori's survival. Because at this point, it's not looking good. Tell her fucking mother. Tell her mother. Because she's not going to see you again. Especially after you fucked up this ordeal. He literally just needed to get the word out. Just say, her father beats her. Obviously going to catch Sayori off guard. Then allows you to explain the rest of the situation. Then she understands. 
But no, he's like, oh, I need to say something. You're not letting me, so I'm just going to let you interrupt me. <sighs> oh my god. Had a bit of time to cool off. His was getting a bit loud, but yeah. I'm just... I'm astonished at how the MC in this mod could go from being able to do to deduce that Natsuki, that the cause of her injuries was her father, and that he needed to do something and act quick, to not being able to solve this little drama between Sayori thinking he's with Natsuki because they're all lovey-dovey and whatever, even though they are. But it originally started for an R reason, which is what she needs to know. He can't seem to communicate that. I guarantee. The reason this is, is because no matter what the mod is, and I know this from all the mods I play, I never play just regular visual novel mods for this game. But because in the end, everyone needs to be punished. And the harder it is to accomplish that, the dumber the MC needs to be, so that that can happen. Does he really play just a normal DDLC mod after this? Dunno. Raven, you gotta be more careful. You could have seen me. You know. I don't know what you're talking about. Cloth? I know, I know. It was an accident. I'm sorry, okay? You didn't need to hit me so hard, though. Dude, just shut the fuck up. I wasn't sure it was you until I had already hit you. I'm sorry, too. Just please knock next time, okay? I will. Don't worry. Give me a minute to get right. Sure, I guess I'll just be in my room. I retreat to my room and wait. While I'm sat at the computer, my phone rings from across the room. Picking it up, I see it's a text from, is it Sayori? Yuri? Oh my. Alright. This is interesting. This is interesting. Because I I remember mentioning in the last episode that now because we'd seen Yuri cut. And the MC has still been really silent about that. Like he hasn't even brought it up once. Mainly because he's with mainly because he's dealing with Sayori Natsuki drama, but he still hasn't brought that up once. And now it looks like this is the third problem on our load. Think about it. If the MC did as what I suggested, brought Sayori in, had Sayori Natsuki explain their situation, we would have full focus on Yuri in dealing with her problems. How'd you get my number? Don't fucking ask questions like that at this point. Because now we know all of the girls and their problems. And now it's our job to fix them. So little questions like this don't matter at this point. It's Raven's number, it's Yuri. I have no choice but to reply. Say no. He asked me, what's up? I need to talk to you about what we saw yesterday. Now he's going to be like, oh shit, I remember that. It's not that serious. I stared at it for a minute. She wants to talk about the cuts. Shut the fuck up. Of course she wants to talk about the cuts. No one cares about Monica. Are you talking about your arms? She takes a moment to respond, sending an over, over a sizable paragraph. Yes. I was never given a chance to explain myself. I'm going to have to be careful with how I word my sentences. You know, do it in person. I mean, obviously you can't see Sayori, Sayori at this point. Natsuki did fucking fine on her own. There's no reason not to go see Yuri in person about this. Well, I'm going to ask the questions then. Alright. Did you cut yourself because you might do... Oh. Of course, this is some dumbass question. No, I'm not. I'm not depressed. In fact, it's quite the contrary. The pain is what motivates me. It's so exhilarating. It's almost like a high. Then how'd you start? She takes her time right on her response. The three pips indicating that she's typing flicker one by one. Eventually, her explanation comes out as a large paragraph. Well, I've always had a morbid fascination with knives from when I was young. Before I start, I just collect them. All different styles, engravings, colors. They really are beautiful. And while reading a book some time ago, the topic came up. I was only going to try once to see what it felt like. That's what Monica said. Monica was faithful to her work. But then again, she's a bitch in this mod. I can't, I can't like, preach my Monica beliefs in a mod like this. But I grew into a fully-fledged addiction. I know Cursey and Monica, that's not a good position to be in. But I can't stop. It's just something about the blade effortlessly slicing over my skin that excites me. It's such a thrill. I can't help it anymore. The sensation is too powerful. That's not healthy. This is something else. I'm, I'm, I'm astounded. He's like, wow, I haven't dealt with something like this before. You have twice. You fucked it up, and now you have one more problem on your load. I don't even know what to do. Listen, bro, please, just 
if I could fucking command the MCU what to do at this point, I would fix it. Just, there's something nagging at my mind. Speaking of Monica, this isn't important right now. Deal with this another time. Monica's issues are Monica's issues, alright? Now you need to focus on the other three, because Monica is not in danger of losing her life to dumb shit like what we've seen. How'd she find out? Oh, Ooh, that's a good question. I thought he was going to be like, why is she acting like such a bitch? No, it was an actual question. An hour, a few minutes passed. An hour, a paragraph. It was one day after the club had ended. No more than two weeks ago. I don't even remember what I was doing at the time. My sleeve slipped up and Monica saw everything. That sounds like bullshit. Because her sleeve never slipped up when we were in the club. It just had to be something so that she could know. We spoke about it for a few hours. She even invited me over to her house to talk in private. She tried to help. I could tell she cared, but nothing she suggested actually worked. After she had to shut down the Literature Club Festival, she took it out on me. She assumed that I was going to blame her, even though I really didn't think any less of her when she had no choice but to postpone it. All I said was that she should have tried to get in contact with everyone before the festival started. She didn't really take it well. Yeah, that sounds like she's not open to suggestion, really. I mean, it is smart. Like, she, she literally never texted us. In fact, the only number we got was the number of the person who we chose to go out with, either Natsuki or Yuri. But, I mean, yeah. She threatened me, telling me not to make a scene about the festival in front of the rest of you, or she'd tell everyone about my arms. I was very shaken by what she said, not just because of what she, not just because of what she was threatening, but because I'd never seen that side of her. If I'm honest with you, Raven, she scares me. Once again, I'm at a loss for words. I don't know the full story. I can't approach it now. Yeah, you, got, you have to, it's order of priority. At this point, our number one priority is Sayori. We can't deal with that right now, because we fucked up our earlier interaction. Our next priority is Natsuki. She's doing well. She's probably a bit shaken up by Sayori's letter, and she probably feels guilty. In fact, if she goes to approach Sayori instead of us, I could see that happening. Probably not, because that assumes the character is rational, but... Because, here's the thing. Now... Natsuki knows about Sayori's situation wholeheartedly. Sayori doesn't know about Natsuki's situation. If they try and sort it out, obviously Sayori's going to be salty as hell towards Natsuki. But if Natsuki can get it out, being like, it's not as it seems, I'm in his house. Be or he could just say, the reason I'm in his house is because my father beats me. And I need to get away from him. Then they would resolve and do what the MC could. And then now we have to deal with Yuri and her cutting. Because we have to obviously end the addiction. That's going to be a long as fuck process that we might as well start now. But any step, any step helps. And then, at the last of the list, Monica. I hesitate. If anything, I just want to convince you to seek professional help for her self-harm. If I have a say in it, that can't go on any longer. I see. And if you consider getting help for your arms, how can I convince myself to get help when I'm the best I've ever been? Bring her to the hospital. So don't give her a choice. She's gonna die because she cuts too deep one day. Just because she thinks it's best for her doesn't mean it is. That actually kind of goes against my political philosophy, but the best she's ever been, I don't think she understands what she's getting herself into. She does. You don't. You're like, you're assuming she's rational at this point. No. She lives off the pain. Not to say that I fully do. Right. Can you Natsuki moving through the house, humming to herself? Well, I've got to... You're really prioritizing Natsuki over Yuri. God, I hate... I guess... Here's the thing. I guess love might be like that sometimes. Like, where just nobody else matters but the person you love. I can see it. I can see it. Like, to the point... At, like, to this point where... Even though the threat of death to some of your friends might be there, you're like, I need to focus on my relationship. I can see that. Especially if, well, I can't really see it for a Sayori. Because it's been someone that the MC has been friends with, you know, forever. And that she's really the only person he's had in his life for the past however many years. Yuri I can see because she he just met him. And he might be like, alright, that's crazy, I need to stay away from that. But I mean, at least do something with Sayori. <coughs> I don't want to say I'm in the same boat, but yeah, I could see it. Alright, Raven, I'll speak to you in our time. In the club, perhaps. We. That's really the question at this point.
whether or not we go to the club. I really want the MC to go to the club. I don't want him to just... Because at this point, the game can either go one of two ways. Like, we just never go to the club again, or we go and try to resolve everything and bring everyone back. I just want to thank you for trying to help, even if it won't change much. Show us that you care. She deadass texted a smiley face. I do care. Bye, Yuri. That doesn't seem like you care. I send her a final text, throwing my phone into my bed. Asking knocks on my door. Yeah, come in. See, it's not that hard, Raven. I said, I was sorry. What more do you want? Listen. We have to, like, be done putting up with shit like this. Because, like, there's bigger priorities than just flirting with Natsuki. Who said that? Hmm. Oh, I know. You can carry my Parfait Girls collection home for me. You're going home? Ah? Huh? Oh, home is in the... Wait. Alright. Home is in the Literature Club or Home Home? Because neither of those places seem like the best place for you to be. You really want to go home? So this is your home now, eh? Oh, uh, sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I just thought I could, you know, stay here. Oh, I thought you meant... I thought it was here, and I was going back to your dad's house, and I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? I'm a little worried. I took my teasing too far. How could I say no to her? Well, of course, Natsuki. I was only trying to tease you. So, uh, we going back to the club. That's the question. Now you mentioned saying you might actually need this. Turn to my bedside drawer. Roam through there for a second. Looking for my spare house key. The phone beeps and Natsuki beats me a check in it. Opening the message, Natsuki reach oils, dropping my phone to the floor, disgusted. Uh, uh, <sighs> you no, know, we should make some smart ass comment in this situation. Like, haven't you learned to knock before you check people's phones? I would fuck. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. If this were me in that situation, I would so say something like that and probably get punched for it, but. Proves the point, I mean, really. Is this a picture of Yuri's cuts? I guarantee it is. I guarantee it is. Listen, oh my fucking god. We have to deal with so much shit right now because of bullshit like this. Literally. Because now, alright, how do we approach this now? Because if it is a picture of Yuri's cuts, Noski now knows about Yuri's problem. And pff, there's nothing we can really do about that. We could text Yuri. And be like, oh yeah, Natsuki knows about your problem too. And that would be more pressure for her to stop. You could use it as leverage. But I mean, I don't even know. I've, I've fucking given up trying to like analyze this game. It's mod. Hey, watch it. As I go to pick up the phone, see for myself what's sick in Natsuki. It's a picture of Yuri. See in our bed. Her scarred arms, Kevin. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a second. What the... I'm so done with this mod. I'm so done with this mod. I can't play these mods anymore. Scar Arm is covering her otherwise bare legs. She's wearing a purple bra, a small crimson heart drawn on her left breast with a red marker. <laughs> or at least I hope it is. What the actual fuck? What the fuck? Because here's the thing. If she wasn't cutting herself to fucking pieces, Natsuki would be like, why the fuck are you in her lit? Why the fuck is Yuri sending you nudes? Why the fuck is she sexting you? But because there's cuts on her arm, she can't even come to that conclusion. In fact, it's probably better that she has cuts on her arm than if it was just, you know, Yuri sending us a fucking sex. Because then Natsuki would feel like she'd betrayed, be all depressed. But now she's just like, what the actual fuck am I looking at? Yuri's fucking naked body with cuts on her fucking arms. I, I'm so dumb. I'm... Do I really want this this mod? I don't know how to respond. Be like, ah, this Photoshop's a helpful tool. Closing my message down, I throw my phone back onto the bed. Natsuki is distraught. Raven, what the hell is that doing on your phone? I don't know. And her arms. The heart? Alright, at least she has her priorities straight. Like, she's not like, why the fuck is Yuri sexing you? She's like, the fuck is wrong with her arms? We were talking about our arms before. I told her to get some help. She wasn't listening to me. Natsuki, I promise you, I didn't say anything to encourage her to send me something like that to me. Drew my phone from a bench, show Natsuki the messages regarding her arms. Purposely keep the messages regarding Maka hidden, as I don't want Natsuki to jump to conclusions. She's as confused as I am. Yuri, she needs serious help. Clearly. But why'd she send that to you? I'd be so open about this with you. Well, I saw our arms yesterday. As, I, as before, I omit Amaka from the incident. 
told me not to sign one, so I didn't, because I didn't know what the hell else to do. Alright, that's actually, finally he does something right, and it fucking omits Maka from the situation. I mean, for once, he's he's actually handling this really well. I mean, Natsuki, she isn't, like, distraught like Sayori is. That's what I was worried about. I'm like, this can't be anything good. But, yeah, so, props to the MC for this, actually. Raven, you know we're going to have to talk to her about this. Weird. It's not healthy to be kind like that. It doesn't help that she clearly gets off doing it. Must have meant something, something in her head that made her think that this was okay. Ooh, those must have been fresh cuts then. So that's why she gets fucking off by doing it. So she was just sitting there in her underwear, fucking cuts on her arm, just like getting off to that. Alright, I guess that explains the situation. At first, I thought it was like in New Eyes where she just does it. And she gets that feeling. She's like, ooh, yes, just power. Just like feeling of invincible, whatever. I've known Yuri for as long as I've been in the club, and yeah, she gets overly attached the moment anyone shows her any attention. That felt like a personal attack. I'm going to ignore that, but anyway. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, because in the mod New Eyes, we've seen Yuri's closeness with Natsuki and how they're actually probably the closest members of everyone else, assuming that that's canon. But I mean, I, you, I assume Rain Clouds and New Eyes is canon, just to make things interesting. I guess canon isn't the right term, but maybe, I don't know. I hate to say it, but it's true. But holy crap, I've never seen anything like that before. Well, we'll talk to you the next chance we get, okay? Alright, Raven. Oh, and before I forget, take this very housekeeper from my desk drawer and hand it to Natsuki. My surprise, Natsuki's mood seems to completely shift. She pauses for a moment before jumping into my arms. Raven. Haha, <laughs> thanks. You're the best boyfriend ever. So as we escape Natsuki's mouth, she jumps back. This is the first time she's called me that. Listen, this isn't the time for fucking that. After Sayori and uh, she saw Yuri. Just, just saying. <coughs> Priorities. I can't help but smile. Hearing her call me that made the text with Yuri, Monica's argument, everything melt away. That's not a fucking good thing, Sayori. They didn't matter. Oh shit. Damn, I fucking hate the MC for this. I'm really dead ass gonna have to play through this mod, watching the MC fuck everything up. More times with Nasi, more frequently I felt this way. Waking up next to her, reading with her, hearing her tell me that she loves me, feeling her arms wrapped around me. Never thought I could feel this way about someone. Natsuki, you're the best girlfriend I could have asked for. You're just saying that, aren't you? No, Natsuki, because you're my only girlfriend. You're the only one I've had. I'm not saying that. I love you. More than words can let me describe. Shut the fuck up. Like, this, I don't fucking care about this. This isn't important. No one, because I mean, here's the thing. Now, Natsuki knows about both Sayori and Yuri's problems, as long, along with us and Monica's problems. But instead of doing shit about it, we're all lovey dovey, relationship type. So it's official then? Yeah, I guess so. I love you so much, Raven. Pull Natsuki close to me, holding her tight. She pulls back for a moment and stares at me. I lift her chin up and kiss her. Haha. <laughs> Natsuki buries her face in my chest again, squeezes me as tight as she can. I never want this to end. The two of us stay locked in this embrace for what feels like an eternity, but in reality probably only lasted a few minutes. Since we were separating the doorbell rings. You wanna get that? I hope to... If that's fucking Natsuki's father. I keep saying that as if it's gonna happen, but I mean, he hasn't made a fucking appearance for like two or three days, so I can probably rule that out. I hope that's Sayori, and we can finally nip this in the bud, the fucking relationship drama between Sayori, us, and Natsuki. There's no reason this should go on. I nod. Natsuki heads back to the bathroom. I head downstairs. I wasn't expecting any visitors today. I peered through people. It's Maka, waiting patiently for an answer. Am I going to end the mod here? Am I going to end the video here? I think I got it. I fucking saved it to the wrong one. I don't even care. Am I going to end it here? Alright. For this. Mm. One, we obviously know Monica found our address because she's omnipresent, but the MC, that should be the first question that MC is asking. Second off, why is she here? She wouldn't be here to try and amend stuff unless she was 
Well, I mean, I guess that might actually be the move. Because, from her point of view, she can probably bank on the literature club being quite empty for a week or so. So, she might actually have to come to us, and that might actually be that. But, given how this mod has been going, I doubt that. She's here to berate us. She's going to find Natsuki, fucking berate us, tell us Sayor, just fucking fuck everything up. More than we have. Guarantee that's what's going to happen, but this mod isn't a good mod. Or, well, it's a good mod. This is not supposed to be a good, feels good mod. That's what it means. Still, though. That fucking picture of yours, that was a lot to the imagination. I'm not a good drawer. Just going to put that out there, but yeah. I mean, I guess that's it. Um, I'll save this. I can exit to the main menu. I completely fucking forgot. I muted it when I paused it. So the video's been going for like 20 minutes without sound. But anyway, this screen is alive. No one's happy. This is a suffering mom. Anyway. I actually really like this music though. Really do. Really do. I mean, anyway, yup. Um... So, what day is it? It is Thursday. Close to being Friday. So next week, Monday, is when I think I'll start doing uh, doubles for recording. I'll pr what I'll do is I'll probably, and I say this now because I have time, because my past sex in music videos have gone for like an hour and 15, hour and 9. Um, what is it? Yeah, what I'll probably do is I'll finish exit music. And what's the mod after exit music they had written down? Um, let's see. Our Final Heartbeat. It's going to be the one I'm going to play after this one. And that's the last one I've written down. After that, I'll probably just go down the completed list. Or I might try and find some R-Mine website that I can narrow the mods down from. Because just having a big pool of mods, like, I don't really know what to pick from. If I can get, like, a list of good mods, that would be good. Great. Because, well, have I played a bad mod? I actually don't think I have. <coughs> I don't think I've played a single bad mod. I guess I can look at some of the demo mods I've played. The Day Club demo was pretty good. After Sayori demo was pretty good. I remember that one. Recoded and Coldest Summer demo were both good. Recoded was a bit like, that was a bit more of a troll mod. It was an actual mod. It was more like a meme mod. But, yeah. God, I've played so many mods. This list is really expanded. But yeah, I know which mods to stay away from. I have the two written down for that. But, yeah. I mean, where is I going with this? Oh, yeah. So, I'll be doubling with Insurgents as my double until I complete the game, which should be a while. But my primary is going to switch from the DLC mods. At some point, I wanted to replay through the actual game. And mainly see what secret stuff I can get in Act 2, if any. But that doesn't take priority over playing actual mods. Or at least actual completed ones. Because there's quite a few. I've won over, but yeah. I mean... Yeah, so... Then probably after I play the completed mods, I'll try and get... I'll probably try and play Civilization. Try and get one more round of civilization. Or maybe that could be my double. And then I play Insurgents after that. Because there is a lot of DDLC stuff I want to do. So I actually think that sounds more plausible. Or I, I, I don't know. I, probably, I might just not do civilization anymore. I'll have to see. But anyway, I'm going to end it here. It's basically all there is. So yep, that's it for today. Tomorrow it is then.